Hi, I'm Devin, and today we're going to talk about picture framing your deck stairs so you have a nice edge that looks good and is uh, clean as opposed to a nasty, icky, just plain composite deck edge. I'll be walking through all that. Before I do anything else, though, let me first off call out two people on YouTube Gary Daly at the Fast and Massener Pro, Pro Tips site. Uh, Gary, I wasn't able to do this without his instructional video, so he did some good stuff. And uh, I think most importantly, Mike Gurton over at uh, Fine Home Building. Uh, Mike Gurton has an entire series on building decks. It's an excellent series. Uh, he explains the engineering behind the way you do things and why to do, why you do things and, and how to do things right, as opposed to how doing things in a half-assed manner that looks nice but ultimately will fail and you know cause horrible injury and death and all that horribleness. So anyway, thanks to both of those. So uh, we're going to talk about picture framing deck stairs, and the reason why is um, this is composite decking material that we're going to be using for our stairs. And if you look at the edges, that's ugly. Nobody wants to see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to picture frame them to uh, make them look very, very nice and beautiful. And to do that, we need a bunch of things. So we'll start. You need some good um, composite deck screws. They're different than normal decking screws. They're designed specifically for composite material. You'll notice the threads go one direction and then at the very end they reverse direction. That's to lock them in. They're color coded to your deck. Decking material, you can buy them uh, color coded or color matched to your decking material. This is a hidden fastener uh, for the, I happen to be using Trex decking. I'm not saying you have to use it. This is just a hidden fastener system. And the reason I have this is it gives us the gap uh, we can measure that to determine the appropriate gap between our deck seams um, for, for drainage. This is, I've pre-measured this and it's one quarter of an inch um, is our gap there. So that's so we know that. Uh, we'll need some butyl tape. We'll get into that why later, but we need butyl tape. Uh, safety glasses, I'll actually wear them this time. You'll need a long one eighth inch drill bit of high quality. You'll need a carpenter's triangle, a pencil. Oh, look, there's another one of my spacers. Uh, a carpenter's square, some clamps, your decking material, of course. Uh, you'll need a drill with a 5 32nd central drill bit and an impact driver. You can get away with just using a drill instead of the impact driver, but trust me, it's worth it to have both. It makes your life really easy. And in addition to these, we will also need a chop saw. This is my chop saw. I love this saw. This is Terry Bradshaw Brad saw. Anyway, you'll need one of these. Uh, absolute excellent tool. You can get different brands. Um, they all basically do the same. They chop. And most importantly, you can set angles on them. So that's what we're going to start with. We're going to grab a piece of our decking material. Now I have pre-cut this to the appropriate width. And uh, now I'm going to take the corners off. Normally, if you're doing a lot, you can just cut angle, 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 and you don't square it and then cut the corners off. But fortunately, I didn't do that originally. And so we're going to take the corners off. And it's really easy to do that. First thing you're going to want to do is come on over here. On your chop saw, you're going to have an angle indicator. Right now, my this red angle indicator right here is indicating zero, which means zero or 90. I'm just depending on your point of view, so I would make a perfectly square cut. And what I can do is I can unlock and I can move this. And this is a miter cut, and so we're going to go to 45 degrees, and mine just happens to have a lock-in at 45 degrees, so I'll just lock it. There we go. And so now we're going to take this corner material off. And the way to do that, we take our carpenter's square, or excuse me, our carpenter's triangle, and I'm going to come up here to the very edge, and I want to cut right at the edge. I don't want to cut in because this is already the right length. So I'm going to mark my mark right there, come down, and I don't really need the mark other than as an indicator as to where I'm going to cut with the chop saw. So I'll bring the blade down 
and get it lined up exactly on that mark. You can see it, absolutely perfect. And then um, I have my safety glasses on, I have my safety gloves on, I'm gonna hold it in place, clamp it down, I'm not going to, uh, and then just make our cut. a nice nice edge on that corner nice and flat and beautiful so i'm going to go ahead and uh cut the rest of these real quick we'll come back after i've cut them because you don't want to watch me cut everything but we're going to cut these real quick we've cut our main steps um 45 degree angle on each one and now what we need to do is cut the end pieces. So we're gonna have an end piece that's gonna come in with a step like this. And this end piece is going to control the gap between these two. So if you remember, I spoke earlier about these little spacer pieces that would normally go in between. They're a quarter inch across. So we're gonna take this piece that I previously cut, I cut a 45 and a 45 off of it so that I can now cut my other pieces off to get the right size and what I want to do is I want to come in to this very tip this front and I want one quarter inch of material so it's I'm gonna mark that right there at one quarter of an inch and we're gonna come over here on the same on the other side and we're gonna mark one quarter inch of material and this is the amount of material that I want on the end to force a gap between these two pieces so Given that and that one quarter inch mark, I can now come and ooh, ah, there we go. I can now make a mark here. You'll see there's the one quarter inch mark, so I slide right up till I touch it. I'm good. And that's the mark for that cut. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. Come up to the one quarter inch mark. Oops, there we go. So there's my mark. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna cut these off so that we have them correct. And just so we're clear and so there's no confusion, when you take one piece of wood or composite decking material and another piece of composite decking material and you join them, you can either butt them up, which means this is un un open and looks ugly, or you can butt them up, which means this is open and ugly, or kind of join them and that's what we're doing we're going to be cutting a 45 degree angle to join the two pieces to picture frame it and the carpenter square is always 45 and that's why i've set my miter at 45 it's 45 over on this side and here's where my mark is with my 1 8 inch gap and we're going to come in and cut that and we get this lined up and you'll notice my hand is not anywhere touching the trigger or the, the switch while I'm in here with my thumbs because I, I like my thumbs. I don't want to lose my thumbs. So I'm gonna get lined up. I'm very happy with that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and make the cut. Because of the blade angle and the change and I'm pretty, I don't want to deal with this and trying to mark it on the back side so I'll just swing this whole thing around to the 45 degree lock in place and we'll do the same thing for this piece bring it down get lined up cut we're gonna go ahead and drill them so the way we do this is um you want to come in here let me here i'll do this so we can get sunlight and do it right there we go so i'm going to come in and i'm going to start at a straight angle and the distance from here to here doesn't have to be perfect it can be off a little bit doesn't really matter but about that far about an inch and a half 
inch to three quarters. I'm gonna come in straight and then I'm gonna turn, giving me about a 20 to 30 degree angle between this face and here. Drill straight through into my um, sacrificial work surface and drill into it and not worry about it because it's just a piece of plywood and it gets replaced every season. So you've got one hole. Okay, so we're back here at the work area. I've got my pilot's holes drilled. I've got this clamp down. My clamps are directly over where, the, where I want my holes to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my safety glasses on and pull down my hat and we're gonna drill this. See a lot of that molten, horrible composite material coming out of there. That's the reason for pilot holes, because otherwise that would build up in that crack. A little bit more. Check my depth. Good. Okay, so pull these apart real quick. Take this off, and now I'm going to run a, a screw through here twice to clean out any buildup material that's caused by running the screw. I've got through. my screw, got my material. I'm just going to run this in a little bit. I'm going to stop before the threads reverse, and you'll see as that screw went in, it pushed out a bunch of that composite material. We want to scrape that, toss that away, because we don't want to accidentally force that into the sink. We do this twice, and then back that out, and that's good. And we'll repeat this for this one as well. We're going to put our corner piece in. See, I've got on one side, on one screw, I've got a little tip sticking out, about a sixteenth of an inch. The other side is not, just the one side. And the reason for that is when I place it back into my improvised jig thing, I want to get it exactly in the pilot hole that I previously drilled. So you see the gap, and I'm just gonna slide this along and it snaps right in. I can only do one side because otherwise it won't fit because they're cross angled. So that gets me right back to where I need to be. Put my clamp right back in place. Push this one gently, get my clamp back in place. And now we're going to drive it in. We're not going to go in all the way. We're just we're going to stop right before we get to the end. And uh, I'll explain after I do this. So right there, we just stop. What we've done is we put the, the, the tip of the threads of this screw are now into this piece of composite. If we were to crank that down now and then come over and do this side, we could run the risk of cracking the composite. So what we want to do is we do one side and now we'll bring the other in. Here we go. Just to there, and now we can bring, go back to this one and finish this one up. And now that's in and that's in, you'll see we have a really, really nice, nice gap like we had planned on. So uh, we'll do the other side and uh, we'll put it on back to the steps. You remember previously when I introduced the video, I talked about things you're going to need and I spoke about butyl tape. What butyl tape is for is um, it's a sealer and what, what it's going to do is here we have the pieces of wood that uh, our stair can sit on and this is it's also going to sit on here but nothing's going to go through this wood. Whereas we may have screws going into this material or here or here or wherever we're going to have screws going into the wood, you want the butyl tape in place to rest or wherever you're going to have any kind of movement. And the reason why is this tape will stop any moisture from wicking down that screw and into the wood. Even though it's pressure treated, moisture can wick in on a, on a screw line and the butyl tape will stop that and prevent that. And it will extend the life of this wood 
uh, it's pressure treated wood, but it's still wood. It will extend the life of this wood by eight to 10 years. So instead of 10 years or 12 years out of a pressure treated deck frame, you can get 20, 25 years just by spending the money on the butyl tape. So we're here, we have our tape in place. Uh, this is previously measured where I know screws are gonna go. That's why there's some there and here and here. I'm gonna take our beautiful deck piece that we've made. We're just gonna set it on. And we're very happy with that. And we're going to run some screws in. Get this exact. I've got a little tiny overhang here that I can feel with my fingertips so I can get it right. Everything is previously measured. I'm pretty happy about this. Starting in the middle and working my way out. Okay, we're back here at the end of the step and I've, I've done my screws from the center out to this end. Now, your instinct might be to put the screws out here. But remember, we have this huge piece of deck material underneath our blocking. If you look up here, we've got our blocking just like this on all the steps. We've got a nice big piece of wood to screw into. And way out here is only fastening this edge and it's not, not really holding this. We, we get our stresses in different places. So where we're actually gonna put them is we're gonna make a triangle of, 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 of screws here in a little bit. stop before I go all the way in. And you remember before when I showed you, we had the little T of butyl tape underneath this. I'm going right into that butyl tape. Okay, so now I've got three pieces of wood, one, two, three, and they're currently held together with a screw here and a screw here. So now I want to screw these in evenly because even though the pieces of wood are level, there's a possibility of pulling a tip out of place and getting it weird. So that's why I stopped them all here. And now I'm just going to kind of bump them in a little bit. Just right to the surface. Bump it in. Bump it in. And now, Oop, that one needs to go down just a hair more. And now I have a nice, smooth deck surface. No raised areas. Everything is nice. And we're good to go. we got a beautiful deck. Uh, step. It's not a deck. It's a step. I'm going to finish this side out, and then I'll go ahead and finish the rest of the stairs. But thanks for watching.